Hey guys, my name is Ismaus, and today I want to share some tips that can help you speed up your workflow in Blender. Uh, so I'm working on this 90s kind of themed uh, scene. Uh, you have just a street here with a few buildings and a uh, video store, something like that. And uh, yeah, so I want to share how you can speed up your workflow, especially when it comes to texturing. So for example, in the, when, I'm work, when I was doing this road, I decided instead of just uh, creating anime texture and then uh, UV mapping onto, uh, UV mapping it onto the surface. Uh, I, I decided instead of doing that, I can just use a mesh uh, that I can, can, let me just show you how this looks. You can see how this mesh is and uh, to break it up uh, so that it can blend in easily, blend in easily with the surface, I just, I use an alpha mask uh, to mask off uh, some of these uh, areas. So. If I look at this surface here, I'm using this grunge map uh, then, and also, is it, no, actually I'm using this, this surface here and then just giving it a bit of contrast and feeding that into uh, the alpha mask here uh, to cut out or to kind of break it up apart and uh, I can play with this the values here to make it kind of look more worn out or less worn out. Uh, it makes it easier to, put, to reposition uh, the textures instead of just going into the image texture you have photoshopped in or uh, UV unwrapped and uh, uh, changing that. So I can even, you can see this is a text. It's actually, so I can make it change to any, uh, let me see, give way. Give way, something like that. And uh, you can see it's using the same material, so it breaks up quite nicely. I don't even have to UV UV map this uh, because if textures uh, text can be UV mapped in uh, uh, in Blender, but uh, uh, what I use is a uh, texture coordinates, object texture coordinates uh, to have the texture mapped onto the surface, and uh, uh, because of that alpha mask, I can just also make it look more worn out or less worn out. Uh, in the same way I created these, I added these, uh, uh, I've seen this concept used in Unreal, uh, they're, they're called decals in Unreal. Uh, we don't have something like that in Blender, so I just decided to uh, see if it would work and uh, you can see it works both in Cycles and Eevee. So let's see. Okay, I'm not sure why those are rendering pink, but uh, that's not, let me, let me just look at uh, this area here. Get this surface. And maybe let me add a point, a light here, so that uh, it's less noisy and uh, we can see everything. Uh, you can see that you also get those, yeah, decals. Uh, so because this is an alpha mask. can move it on any surface I want and uh, it should look just fine. Another thing to note, if you're going to use this technique, you want to make sure that uh, the material you set it to does not emit, does not, uh, does not uh, have shadows, does not cast any shadows. I should do this for cycles. So to do that, to make sure, because what you don't want to see is, uh, let me just bring this around here. Turn this on. We don't want this this to cast a shadow onto other wall. Otherwise, it will look like you have a, a surface on top of the wall uh, instead of just it being integrated. And I don't think this is casting any shadows, uh, which I did expect to. Uh, but uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. It doesn't seem to be casting any shadows or the shadows are too soft for, for cycles to pick up. Let me see, because I don't think I turned that off uh, for cycles. I only turned it off for Eevee. Let me see. I think. So to turn off shadows, you have to go under visibility. Yeah, okay. Uh, they are turned off for this one. So that's why you see it's not casting any shadows. But if you have shadows, uh, sorry, actually, 
Uh, it has shadows, but uh, they are not visible here. Maybe they are there, but uh, the, the resolution is not high enough to start to see that. Uh, but uh, make sure when you're going to use that. I think you c it is slightly there. As you can see there, there, there. It is there. So if you're going to use this, make sure you don't have any shadows turned on uh, so that it can blend in seamlessly with the surface. I think this is more visible in EV than cycles. So let me turn that. Let me turn on the shadows back on here so that you can see how that would affect. Yes, you can start, to, you see even the flickering happening, but uh, if you turn off uh, the shadows, you don't have a, that issue. And I make sure that uh, this surface is really close uh, to the wall, but not, to, not overlaying with it, otherwise you're going to have some uh, artifact uh, being rendered with that. So, uh, and uh, if you want to just be sure, you can also use the shrink wrap modifier to uh, wrap it onto the surface itself. But uh, I just wanted to do have a quick setup here. Uh, that's why I just did it like that. Uh, let's see what other tip I wanted to show you here. Now uh, you can see in the same way I made this uh, crossing here. I also did uh, this here. So instead of just texturing this directly, and I don't, I just create a mesh and I uh, just give it so that I can position this very, very easily. Put it there, there, you know. Uh, same with these road markings. I did the same concept and that's how I managed to achieve uh, that. And uh, you can see this painting here. You can see we have a different a color for this here. So breaking up this color here, it's the same technique. I'm using this, uh, actually this is for this bottom because uh, I also have this to kind of break up that color, which I think makes makes things a little bit more interesting. Uh, also, you can see these uh, kind of stains on this surface. You, you may think that uh, they are actually painted directly onto the wall, but uh, I didn't do that because I knew it would take a lot of time to do. And uh, I'm all for quick workflows, so you can see I can move this around. I can even duplicate this if I wanted to and uh, just uh, if you want to snap a surface at for example here and just move just hold down shift and then let me make sure this is recording just hold down shift and then click onto the area you want to snap it to then shift s selection to cursor now i can rotate it 90 degrees or clear rotation so that is uh, facing the wall as i want it to just rotate it 90 degrees again now you want it to be a bit maybe like one pixels on top of the surface you can see actually i'm going to leave this here because i think it looks really nice on top of glass here on top of this glass uh, so let me just select this add a loop here and i'm just going to select separate this part into its own object so that i can leave that onto uh, the glass maybe extend it a bit here I think it really looks nice. It makes it adds some stains onto the glass without doing too much work, UV unwrapping and uh, figuring out how to texture the surface. So I wanted to add these stains onto this wall because I think it's too plain right now. It's too clean right now. So uh, and uh, let me just go back to my materials here. Make sure I'm selecting the right surface. Play with it just a bit. Um, I'm going to make the colors a bit darker. The stains look a bit darker. And, uh, let me just have one face. Let me go to solid mode so that I can see what I'm doing. Just select these faces, delete them so that I only have this face. This face here. Now I want these stains to be. On this surface, so I'll just extend it here. You can start to see how it's breaking up the wall nicely. Uh, so let me just unwrap again so that uh, I'm 
much difficult to extend this further down then unwrap extend this just like that you can see how it's breaking up this surface just a bit and uh, let me make this its own material so that I can scale down uh, the textures a bit so that we have more stains now uh, I set this to clipping so I want it to be repeating so that it repeats everywhere like that uh, let me change uh, the color of the stain a bit I have my setup here but I think it's, it's not necessary uh, for this so I'm just going to make it super simple here so I will have this image here being fed into the alpha mask and uh, I'm adding this color ramp just to control how worn out uh, the surface is now to control the color you can just give it a darker color so that it can blend in with the surface just a bit now parts of it have gone onto the surface onto the window or glass so I'm just going to add a few loops here and just delete that face that makes up that area so that now I can just delete this face here so that they only appear on the surface now we can see that uh, they're tiling too much here and uh, can also just uh, duplicate this here shift D snap it onto there you can see how this kind this type of workflow speeds up everything so I want to have some kind of I think they're called dripping I don't know how to call them but I'm just going to duplicate this material again uh, this is not needed for this setup here so we just need a different material here I think let's see let's see let's see something like we want some leaking uh, surface This would be nice. Uh, I think I need to use the unwrap this again. This surface. sure if this is it let's just go with this it looks more better let's rotate this 90 degrees going to use uh, let me look at the alpha mask for this okay now I can add a color mix RGB so that I can just subtract the alpha mask from this Connect this to the base color, or you can just uh, connect this to the base color. Now, if you preview this, you should be just seeing uh, this only. Reset the scale here and the positioning here. I think it's what is causing the issues right now. Let me just.
going to make this a bit darker by adding a color mix RGB and just uh, make it darker like that. Need to mirror it on the Z axis uh, so that it's, uh, the surfaces are leaking from above uh, down. Now these are not the best. Uh, this is not the best texture for this. see if I can find any grunge, good grunge texture. That's speaking, let me see. Now let's just go with this here and just create our own alpha mask from this. So let's just find, I think, this spot here would be best. So you can see that the leakages are going up down. Uh, let's flip that in the UV map, mirroring that, that on the Y axis using Ctrl M. So I want this to blend into uh, the surface. Uh, with this image doesn't have an alpha map. Uh, so instead of using this alpha channel, I'm just going to get this color. Now if you preview uh, this, you can control here like that and uh, that should give us a nice mask for our leakages now this should be slapped onto the surface just maybe one pixel and I think we need to invert uh, this mask here color invert you can see now we have our leakages now what you're left with is uh, to align them surface right. see. And there you can you have your leakages uh, not very fond of how this is tiling so much so let me just reduce that you can see you can add quite a lot of detail without doing too much work. And uh, let me show you. So without uh, the details we have we added, it would look like that. And now we have not done quite a lot of work. We have not done a lot of work. Yeah, so those are some tips for you are uh, to increase, uh, speed up your workflow in Blender. And uh, yeah, the time-lapse, uh, it won't be just a time-lapse. I'll be talking over the entire process of creating this. Uh, on my on my second uh, on this channel top channel 101 uh, if you want to watch that i'm going to be premiering the video uh in uh, about six hours i think so yeah if you're interested in watching that uh, you can yeah come around and uh, we chat yeah so those are some tips for you and yeah thank you